I'd like to show everybody the uh, uh, Q5800 Expeditory Fluid Analysis System. It is a portable um, lab in a box. Um, it's designed to be able to bring to the site and to be able to provide instant oil analysis for a critical piece of equipment. The system is very compact and designed to travel and it consists of four major systems. It consists of a tower which includes a, uh, a particle count system and an x-ray fluorescence system for metals. It also contains a, uh, a infrared uh, grating spectrometer based on the fluid scan system, also a kinematic viscometer, and everything is controlled by an instrument touch panel controller. It's battery operated. Um, it has its own waste bag. There is no need for any solvents. And you just need a few consumables. And we will run through a sample here to show you how it works. Now here is the main home screen. It's got a series of screens. Verify the sample, verify that the system is working. You can verify that by taking some known standard, verification standard. The system is calibrated at the factory, so the goal of this verification is just to confirm that the calibration uh, has not drifted. And you can use this fluid and walk you through the process. But typically, in order to run a sample, what we want to go is go over to test. The system can measure preloaded assets that are generated on a standalone desktop software and then transferred over to the device. Or you can measure fluid on the fly, on a spot check. In this situation, we'll take an example of a, of a piece of equipment which we have not got any history on before, and we want to just measure that fluid. So what we can do is we have a capability here which asks us for what is the oil type that we're using. Let's assume that it's a, a diesel oil. You can use what was previously there. You can also put in a sample ID. You can put in the date. And now you're into a main screen, which allows you to look at a whole series of tests. So what we have right now is that the viscometer is warming up. And while that's warming up, we're going to prepare our sample for analysis. So we want to grab a sample for viscosity measurement. I'll just do a little dab on the outside. That's a sample that's necessary for viscosity. What I also will do is agitate the sample to make sure for wear metals. And I'm going to pull about three mils of sample. We'll prepare by putting a filter gram into the XR into the filter patch system. What this is here is a is a poor blockage style particle counter. What we're doing is we're going to introduce or uh, put sample uh, as we as we press the f uh, particles onto the filter. We're also measuring the pressure, and in that we're also de determining particle count. So put that in there have it ready to go. This is warming up. While this is warming up, I'll also check the background for my fluid chemistry. So it says, check my system for cleanliness.
I'm going to do a background check here first of all. This is all preparing for the first time to run samples. You don't need to do this every time. So my viscosity cell is warming up. My background is being checked and I'll be have everything ready to be able to run a sample. So the viscometer is ready to go. So we first of all introduce the sample into the viscometer. So the sample is introduced. Now we take that same and we go to our fluid chemistry. We say start, place the sample in a cell, put a drop on the cell, make sure there's no bubbles. Close it down, press OK. Now we go to particle count. We take our sample here, push it in here, bring it in, lock it down, press start. Now we have the viscometer in progress, fluid chemistry in progress, particle count in progress. Now we go back. Our viscosity is complete. Our fluid chemistry is complete. With our data, our particle count is complete. Now we are ready for to do our elemental analysis. So now we take open this up, take the sample out of this cell, put it in here to our XRF containment area, close it down, press start. System is wrapped up now, the light goes off, the XRF is finished. And now it's going to produce data. That's going to analyze the data, the results for the XRF. Here is a set of results that come up on the system. We measure 13 elements, ranging from all the typical wear metals and, and contaminants that are typical with rotating and reciprocating machinery. And now, when all tests are complete, we can see all the check marks, everything was right, and we continue. So now, here's our summary of our, of our system. Anything that has a problem will be in yellow or red. Anything that has no problem will be in green. So here, for, my, for this spot sample on the truck, the sample I gave it had a very low total base number, so it was alarmed. The scometer properties were normal. Okay, or a little caution mark. Our particle count was okay, and of course I have my metals as well. And I can trend based off of my metals. Okay, I can look at my system, my, 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 uh, system up close, if there's any particular spectra that I want to look at. Or in the case of the metals, I can look at these up close. Or if I have a series of trends, I can look and see the trends over time. Once I have looked at this, I can save my data now. Now the data is saved, I can go back and review this data that I just ran. Let's look at the previous data that I have. And I can see any previous work that I did. And I can recall this sample if I want. If I want to send this data and analyze it, then I can use a standard USB and export that out to my desktop and then manage it using Fluid Manager desktop software. When I'm finished, I have my filter still. And this can act as a record for future reference. So you, all the debris that was captured here can be saved. You may write on it to say what the volume was and what the sample ID is. And you may save that for future um, uh, research. 
or for confirmation of a potential failure. You can also store these like you would with traditional ferrograms or patch filter systems.